Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for GRE. We have been solving GRE math problems out of this book here. Official guide to the revised GRE, the second edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problem that you're about to solve, the problem that we are about to solve is the one that you will find on page number 229. Please turn to it. Page number 229 and today is our lesson number 321. These problems that you see on page number 229 are the exact same problem that appeared in the first edition of the revised GRE. We have already solved every single problem from this book. If you are interested in watching the original solution to the problem that we are about to do, you will find the original solution on day number 108. Here is what the problem says. We have, we have taken three exams, 2.7.1. If you turn to it, it says, Elaine has received the following scores on the three exams, 82, 74 and 90 on the three exams. The question is, what score she needs to receive on the next exam? What score she needs to receive on the next exam? So that the average score on the four exam turns out to be exactly 85. What do we need to score on the four exam on the fourth exam to get an overall average of 85 on the four exams? Now listen, there are two ways you can go about it. This is not a complicated problem, it's a very simple problem. You can do it the traditional way, the orthodox way, the classical way, the mathematical way, or we can do it in a quick and dirty way. If you are interested in watching the classical way, you can watch the day 108 and you will find the solution there. Here I'm going to do it in a little bit of a faster way. Here's what's going on. We have a score of 82 in the first exam. We have a 74 in the second exam. We have a 90 on the third exam. And we want an overall average of 85. That's our target. In other words, in other words, if we had scored, in other words, if we had scored 85 on the first exam, 85 on the second exam, and 85 on the third exam, then we would have needed exactly 85 on the fourth exam and we would have had the average of 85 overall. In other words, 85, in other words, 85 was our target on each of these exams. How short are we on the first exam from our target? We are three points short. We have to make up three points on the first exam. How, how short are we on the second exam? Our, our goal was 85. We have to make up 11, uh, 11, 11 points. We are 11 points short. On the third exam, it turns out that we had a surplus. We had a surplus of five points. So that's it. We are done. Surplus of. We had a surplus of five points. Our goal is 85. That's it. We are done. Three plus 11. Three plus 11 is 14. 14 minus 9 is 14 minus 5. Rather, 14 minus 5 is 9. So we need to do 85 plus 9. This turns out to be. 85 plus 9, which is 94. We need we needed a score of 94 on the fourth exam to have an overall average of 85. That's all. Let's do one more, shall we? Let's see, we're done with it. As I said, if you want to do it in a classical way, you can go ahead and do it. You will find it on day 108. I need the room, so I need to raise it. Let's do it. Let's do the next problem. The next problem is not in the book, it's a bonus problem, and it goes something like this. We had the average, average score on four exams was 68. We are told that we have just taken four exams and our, uh, uh, and our average on those four exams was 68. We are not given the individual scores on the four exams. We are just being told that the average on the four exam was 68. The question is, question is, what do we need, what do we need to score on the fifth, ex fifth exam to get an overall average of 70 on the five exams. What do we need to score on the fifth one
So we have taken we have taken four exams. Our average score on the four exam is 68. The question is, what do we need to score on the fifth exam to get an overall score of 70 on the five exams? Now, what I want you to do is pause the what I want you to do is pause the video, do the problem yourself, any which way you want to do it, and after you have done so, resume the video and then compare the work that you have done yourself against the work that you and I are going to do together in a second. Okay, I'll give you a couple of seconds to pause and then pause. So here we go. The simplest and the quickest way here is to pretend that you have scored 68 on the four exams. Pretend that we had a score, we had a score of exactly 68 on each of the first four exams. This is our solution. So we're going to pretend that we're going to, that we had a score of exactly 68 in each of the four exams. Because why? Because that's the simplest, quickest, more efficient way, most efficient way that is, of making sure that we have a score of 60, uh, so that we have an average score of 68. How can we have an average score of 68 on four exams, or for that matter, any number of exams? Well, the simplest way is to have 68 in all the exams. So that's what we're going to have. 68 on the first exam, 68 on the second exam, 68 on the third exam, 68 on the fourth exam. We want an overall average of 70. That's our goal, overall average of 70. Well, if that's the case, we have to make up two points for the first exam, we have to make up two points for the second exam, because we are two points short, we have to make up two points for the third exam, we have to make up two points for the fourth exam. We are two points short on every single one of them. We scored exactly 68 on the first four exam. We wanted a score of 70 on. If we had a score of 70 on all five of the exams, we would have had an average of 70. So we are eight points short. We are eight points short, which means we need to score. Which means we need to score 78. We need to we need to have a score of 78 on the fifth exam, and that will give us an overall average of. 70 on the final exam because the eight extra points will be distributed distributed among the first four exams. That's all. Let's do one more, shall we? Let's do one more. I need the room again, so I'll give you a few seconds in case you want to pause it. Let's do one more. Here's the next one. Question is the average of. Oh, I forgot to give you the answer choices last time, didn't I? Well, this is no good. It is too late now in the story. The answer choices in the exams were A, B, C, D, E, 70, 72, 74, 76, and 78. Those were the answer choices 72, 70, 72, 74, 76, and 78. And of course, the answer is E. Let's do the next one. We are told that the average of 30, 50, and 70 is 5 more than the average of 40, 60, and what? Again, very straightforward, very simple question. The question is the average of 30. 50 and 70 is 5 more than the average of 40, 60 and what other number, what third number. Let's do it together. Again, what I want you to do at this point is pause the video, solve this problem yourself, any which way you want to do it, whether classical way or non-classical way, any way you want to do it. After you have done the problem, then resume the video, as always, and then compare your work against the work that we are about to do together. Okay, here we go. So here we have three numbers. 30. Here we have three numbers. 30, 50, and 70. 30, 50, and 70. And we are told the average of these three numbers is 5 more. 
5 more than the average of these three numbers. Average of these three numbers. Let's call this x, 40, 60, and x. But how can we make the average of first group? Listen very carefully. The question is, how can we make the average of first group the same as the average of second group? We are told that the average of the first group is 5 more than the average of the second group. Well, how can we make the two averages the same? Well, it's very simple. Just take away 5 from each one of them. Just take away 5 from each one of these numbers. And now, the average of these numbers, the average of these three numbers, is exactly the same as the second group. It's 25, 45, 65 versus 40, 60, and x. Now, the average of this group is the same as the average of this group. And since the averages are the same, which means the sum of these three numbers, which means the sum of these three numbers has to be the same as sum of these three numbers. But well, that makes it, that makes our life actually very simple. I see a 40 here, I see a 45 here. Let's subtract 40 from both groups, shall we? Let's subtract, take away 40 from both groups, and 45 becomes 5. I see 60 here, I see 65 here. Let's take away 60 from both groups, shall we? Take away 60 from both groups, and that becomes 5. That's it, we're done. Our x, the mystery number, the mystery guy, is simply 25 plus 5 plus 5. x equals 25 plus 5 plus 5. 25 plus 5 plus 5, that's it. 25 plus 10 is 35. The missing number, the missing number is 35. That's all, we're done. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.